Hey guys, how you doing? I figured I'd make a, a Counter-Strike video, at least today, uh, to handle quite a few things, so a couple caveats. First off, is I'm doing this because some people have asked, like, hey, can you do more Counter-Strike stuff? Hey, can you do just more videos and stuff? And kind of responding to that, I posted some of my old uh, eSports videos that I had done on my own channel about a year ago and stuff, which is still basically how I build things, um, but maybe, like, walking through the process of kind of how I figure things out or how I do things because I don't necessarily use projections and stuff uh, so I kind of make this video is like hey this is what I do currently or whatever um, two or three the best I can normally do is uh, is things like this to where I kind of just like post in the discord kind of where my exposures are but that's really it like I'm not gonna be sharing lineups and everything or anything like that but like another thing is usually when it comes to League of Legends and counter-strike and stuff like i'm doing those lineups at 10 11 midnight like I'm, I'm usually either too busy in the day especially when nascar is going on uh i'm pretty much either doing research for the week's races reviewing the past week's race or just actually focusing on nascar and so like the only time i'm free to do any esports entries or anything like that is literally before i go to bed you know uh, like 10 11 p.m. or whatever and so like videos it, it I doubt videos are gonna happen like shout out to Chan for doing his League of Legends stuff that I, I don't even know if I would have enough time to do that on a daily basis and and thirdly I don't play Counter-Strike every day it's typically something I do like three times during the week or whatever um, but if things are just going on or I don't like certain lineups or certain slates and stuff I just don't play it so I'm, I'm very picky when it comes to it. everybody knows I don't like the big contests like I've I've tried to get back into them, and I just I suck at the four games or whatever. Um, so, focusing on tonight, I figured I'd kind of go through and, and talk about how I uh, how I built uh, last night or today rather, and how that went, and kind of looking to do that same thing again. And so today, let's go ahead and um, change this. So I've had a pretty pretty good tremendous luck uh, the past couple days uh, in esports and stuff. So. Earlier, I won this contest today, rather, and then um, I think on Monday, I finished first in the in the League of Legends contest, which just happened to work, and we'll kind of talk about those two interchangeably and stuff, um, but this is what happened today, and so I want to talk about this specifically, and specifically the, the solo takedown, and so, like, that's very difficult to do. Um, Counter-Strike, unlike League of Legends, like, League of Legends has LPL and LCK, and then, like, LEC or whatever the US one is like the single best of one match like I don't play those either like I don't play I don't like best of ones either um, but typically League of Legends is just primarily good teams <laughs> like you at least the slates that are offered they're usually good teams like it's the top echelon of whatever region it is and stuff Counter-Strike is can be a vast amount of different things we could be in like tier one which is the top teams you know G2 Vitality all those guys that fighting on ESL and fighting for the IEMs and majors and stuff or we get like tier twos and qualifiers trying to get into those or we get into stuff like this where this is like tier three and tier four stuff which is typically what I've kind of done I guess not better at I've won other ones and stuff but I I really like the the crappy like tier two tier three tier four with these like uh spirit and uh I just went blank on EP, what is EP in power? Endpoint. I just went blank. Um, like, this is this, like, you got to be in the weeds for this type of stuff. And so, we're going to talk about kind of where I go, kind of reiterating what I do, and then focusing a little on tonight's slate, which we'll talk about that. And so, one thing to note is let's not look at the results, let's look at the building blocks of how we got there. And so, when we entered this, when we entered these games, this was a situation where both of these games were true coin flips in uh, the odds, in a lot of the prop lines and stuff. Both of these teams were projected pretty well. I just happen to be more familiar with Endpoint and understanding how they play because I've seen more of their stuff. Because usually I have Counter-Strike like on, on a second screen just goofing around on Twitch. Like I'll just have it up. It's either Counter-Strike or old NASCAR races. That's all that's like on the side here uh, when I'm free. And so I know how Endpoint plays prism or whatever these guys are whatever they're called i wasn't as familiar with and yet again i'll show you how i get through things but i want to really break it down because this is how the the contest ended up looking you can see that i just got stomped uh 
in league today just because uh, one of my teams went one and two and the other one went two zero and stuff. Um, but you can see where a lot of these lineups ended up finishing, which I typically hate to finish here. This is like the worst spot in a contest to finish in. But when we look at the builds, you can see that outside, I think outside, so this is 21 lineups. I think outside of three of them, I used Slade, Slide, whatever, I don't care how you pronounce it, as my captain, going through and trying to figure out who's going to score well. This, this is also a guy at endpoint as well. Uh, but typically what I start off with is I try to identify who is going to be the highest score between, or the most, rather not the most highest score, because typically in tier two, you typically have teams like flip-flop, like it's not always the entry fragger, it's not always the offer and stuff. It, it's usually a lot more wild. And specifically ever since we went to MR12 versus MR15, you have less rounds, less uh, less opportunities for variance to like uh, wiggle its way out. I, I, t I honestly liked MR15 a lot more for DFS than I do MR12 for this reason, because with MR15, 15, you could have a max 30 rounds. You're typically going to have your good players do well. Well, now we're on MR12. It's 24 rounds, six rounds less, and that is pretty significant. You know, you could have good guys, good players, have like five bad rounds, and hey, guess what? Your half's already done. Like, it, it's hard for them to to, to uh, maintain being the highest score and stuff. And so uh, I'm kind of more aggressive in trying to pin down whoever I think is going to be the most consistent and score the highest on the slate between how the game's running. So um, I knew that I wanted to play. I, I figured Endpoint would, would win, would end up winning this game, their match, and I wanted this individual as the captain. Past that, you can only have a max of three people from each team in a lineup. I wanted to have or try to have a majority of, uh, of Endpoint or like two other just random Endpoint guys. Not random, but like, you know what I mean, like, we're just filling out the lineup. It's it's my main captain, and then two other guys from that team. And Azu or as Uwu uh, was the second like most consistent guy when we looked at recent or when I looked at recent matches, which we'll do here for the for the slate tonight. Um, and that's why I wanted to have him in every line in the flex because it was most likely that if Endpoint won and they performed the way that they had been playing, Slide would do the best. As Uwu would be the second best scorer. He's not going to eclipse slide because he's not playing that that uh that role but he's consistently usually the second best guy and you might think about like what their rating is on hltv which we'll talk about but typically sometimes this doesn't even follow their rating and stuff and so anyway i just went basically 100 percent on these two guys and then just filled in the the remaining spot on ep the one thing that i didn't do that i usually normally do is if you know me i just kind of play for two zeros since both these games were coin flips i was more aggressive on getting people from prism prime whatever it's called what is this team called permita whatever the case whatever word that is um i i, I did what i typically don't do and i wanted permita guys in these lineups expecting both these games to go 2-1. I didn't I didn't think we'd see a sweep from Endpoint, to be honest, to be frank with you. And when I'm looking at my lineups, and we'll talk about how the the, uh, fin the projected points go, but right now I'm just using this as an example, that's why I'm not very happy with how these finished. Regardless of what ended up winning or whatnot, I, I should have just stuck to what I normally do and, and not try and spread stuff out and try and cover a lot of bases. I think I made a mistake doing that, to be honest. I think I just need to stick with doing the 3-3 three, three and, and trying to uh, limit the amount of um, four players from one game in my lineups. As you can see, that these guys didn't cash. And this is typically what a majority of the field normally does. And again, I only did it because, man, it's looking like a coin flip. I'm a bit concerned on how this is going to go, how this game is going to go. Once we start getting higher up, a lineup that actually had uh, two players from Sp Monty Mon Sport Monzi Sport whatever, uh, and then one t one guy from Spirit was actually the way to get different. And I think this uh, I think this con I think this lineup left like 1,700, 1,800, maybe even two thousand or whatever on the table um, because it was basically this exact lineup. It just this guy. This one had a player who was seventy six hundred. This player or this lineup had a player that I thought would be lower owned because nobody. I, he was a very cheap op player. I thought he'd come in at lower ownership and he was much cheaper, so I decided to play him. And that ended up being the difference. When we look at how 
well these guys played. Like Nick the Chick, Nick the Stick, I, is it Stick? Whatever. Nick's a fantastic esports player. Reformed Racer, amazing esports player. Like these guys are the two people that I fear in the esports land, man. These guys are so good. These two guys, I tip my hat off to them because I know I'm, I'm having to play head-to-head -head directly against these two individuals because they are probably the best esports DFS players that I know of. Um, that's why I, I built this one. I thought this would just be drastically different. I don't know. I was just trying to get different um, in terms of line of construction. Now, in terms of what I do in my mind, I talk about this when I talk about how I don't necessarily use projections. Let's go ahead and look at the current slate tomorrow really fast here so when we look at counter-strike we're at yale complex sprint whatever who cares like who, who gives a fuck about what these contests are called we have these uh i'm assuming this is godson it's plopsky yeah it has to be godson i don't even know who's playing so we got bld pass let's find these games on here I can't believe Vitality fell. I can't believe they didn't make it. I couldn't believe it. So we have these two teams here, and we have Sang Sangal. So I recognize these two teams. I've seen them play. I have never seen these two individuals. I've never seen these two teams play. So we're going to have to look at those. And so, yet again, I don't use projections. I just kind of go through, and we're kind of going to use these guys and use how these people scored and try and figure out who's going to fall in these positions. As I say, typically, even in Counter-Strike, most of the time if you... If the two teams go 2-0, your top 10 scores on the slate will come from those two teams. You just have to figure out what order they're going to come to. When we have situations where teams go 2-1, or both team, both games go 2-1 or whatever, or we go more games, that's when it starts, you know, we end up losing that 10-player pool that we have, and we start introducing more guys in there, like 13, 14, and 15 guys. But typically, like, winning team, losing team, winning team, winning team, winning team, winning team winning team wait uh let me do that let me do that again winning team losing team winning team winning team winning team losing team losing team winning team so the distribution is all crazy here secondly um depending on how teams perform so you're going to notice that the team outside of oh we're way over here like godsend or not godsend ep no, I am wrong. Okay, sorry. I was getting things. I was looking for the second team. So, like, match match sweep bonus, dominate, dominate, dominate the field. There are some times where teams will be so evenly spread out on a 2-0, they actually end up scoring less than the team that goes into overtime or the game that goes into 2-1. Certainly the nuances I've talked about in other videos and stuff, but typically we're just trying to find people who will fall. Like, this guy will score the – this guy will, is going to score the most. I think he's going to score the most. That's why I played him in the captain in – all these lines because I just thought entering the slate this guy is going to be the best scorer now we got very close I don't know if it would have made a difference I haven't really looked through the lines but and the bam and bam uh, was wait, that's the wrong one not and bam it was a uh, Sadim or Saddam I think they pronounce it Saddam uh, he was getting very very close to this and I was actually very concerned about him eclipsing Slade but the fact that he was 88 86 whatever it is and Slade, Slide, whatever, was 78. I didn't think that would necessarily be a huge difference in the lineups, but I haven't necessarily looked through. But yet again, we're trying to identify people who are going to be the best plays on the teams of the four teams and figure out what of the two of the four teams are going to win and stuff. So Slade was the best player on Empower, EP, whatever. Saddam was the best player on Spirit. Um, Nilo was the best player on this team. Um, and Spirit had the, not Spirit, Prism. Where's Prism at? They underperformed, but Prism's best player was the 96 guy. This guy was 82, but the 94 guy really underperformed. And so, yet again, we're trying to identify who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, and whatnot. And the way we do that, so here we go. Let's actually talk about the slate tonight after I've rambled for 14 minutes. And I'm sorry that taking so long but i'd like to try and explain where i'm coming from and stuff so we have these two guys fighting both teams are winners in their respected brackets of these two guys and same thing these guys are both one in their respective brackets and we can go ahead and look at the actual competition there and we can see how everybody ends up falling through and how everybody is uh actually scored and yeah um 
rosters and stuff. So what I'm looking for here is let's just look at these guys head to head. We haven't looked at odds yet. We haven't looked at anything yet. Let's go ahead and bring up. I don't know it's going to show up on my Google history, so I apologize. But let's bring up CS2 odds Bovada, as we have. We can have a a third or secondary place to find odds from. So like right off the bat, HLTV is viewing uh, Bleed as the bookmarker favorites. We could see. How everybody does in their last three months we can see how they're doing in this event i do not look at the event i look at the last three months i think that is a best i think that is a much better sample size i will look at the event if i'm more familiar with the event or if they're deeper in the event like if we're at an iem event if we're at a major for tier one then i'll trust the event past that i'm usually looking at the three months and typically what i do which i'll show you here is i'll go look at the teams and look at how they've performed within the last four or five matches um and then when we look at Godsend and these guys, Godsend is the better or is the bookmarker favorite on HLTV, which I would say that right off the bat. I think they have way more uh, talent with Plopsky. This is a much more rounded um, out team, but we're typically trying to find the one guy who's going to be your captain play, and that's typically a team that has one guy absolutely carrying the team. That's Plopsky right here. So I'm assuming we're probably going to be high on Plopsky. But... When we look at the betting odds for this event, uh, this will be on, what is this, Friday? Like, yet again, this is IAM uh, Katowice, Katowice, whatever. Um, this will be a slate I'm playing on because I want to, this is tier one Counter Strike. Anyway, when we look at these two guys, Bleed is minus 230, Godson is minus 150. This is pretty, uh, not significant, but a respectable enough that I can trust this line and i fully believe that godson is the better team and so i would go ahead and like okay cool we're looking at things we're trying to see where these guys are going to be in terms of favorites or whatever okay so first off what i want to do is i want to look at bleed because i know nothing about this team so we're going to go and look at bleed here so i need to bring the keyboard out so oh i know surg i know hampus oh i know a lot of these cypher so these are all X tier one competitors, NIP, um, complexity, big. I don't know who Cypher's with, but I recognize these players. So okay, I I haven't seen this team play. I know how these players play. I understand them. We're gonna look at the last couple matches, and as we have, we just have like a ton of tabs open, which is always what happens. Like, you just like look at all these tabs. I have so many tabs open, but this is usually what I do. And so, when I'm looking at this competition, I know Into the Breach, Mezzi was the team I just watched. They played Into the Breach again, Nine, Entropic. Um, these are the games I'm going to specifically look at. And what I'm looking for is not how they won, how they played, but entering it's gonna be this one here. We're looking at Bleed. Current favorite in the event, or the guy who's been performing the best on Bleed has been Favin. When we look at how they are ranked based on the last three months, we can clearly identify that Favin and, and Serg are the two better players on this team. I want to see how consistently they are between the recent games. How are they performing? How are they not performing and stuff? So we can go, we're going to go look in here, and we are looking specifically for Favin and Serg. So how have they performed? So Fav, Favin, even a loss, was the best player on Bleed in this instance. Serg was probably dying the most whatever when we look at detailed stats i typically don't look at detailed stats because we're going to find a lot of assists anyway i just look at the k to kill death ratio or how drastically different it is so this is clearly a bad game bad game here but favin was the best player on this team even in a loss which is good to see you want to see the best player on the team be the best consistently and in losses so like here we're bouncing off another one uh, second most amount of kills, consistently having a, a great KD difference here. So that's good to see. Serg was also doing well. Your top three guys recently, based on this, is there. So that's good to see. Um, actually, Serg is down. Actually, that is the wrong one. We have Serg, Favin, and Lunex, or whatever he is. All right, so we're on... The first match where Into the Breach got beat by these guys, where they most likely adjusted to how they played in this one. So that would indicate, that would, for me, understand, hey, they lost against Into the Breach the second one because they just played them. Into the Breach was able to 
adapt and, and change, but uh, Fevin, not a lot of kills, but still not dying a ton. And this was them in a win, probably a 2-0, right? Yeah, because this amount of kills isn't uh, representative of a game that went like 2-1 or whatever. So this guy had a great game. We're seeing consistent kills out of Serg and Favin, no matter what the situation is. So, let's see the assists. So that's good to see. That's good to see. We'll go ahead and look at the second team. So at this point, I've identified when we're looking at blood, these guys are justified in their prices because they are the most consistent. Hampus, I would say, is probably underpriced, but these guys are right where they should fall in line. These are your primary people that you want to focus on from blood. But now let's, like, am I missing something on the other team, whatever the case may be. So let's go ahead and check out the other team here. Let me X out of the ones I just opened. So we are looking at passion here. Let's see how they performed. And you can, you can also, so like say if you're, Curious on a guy, you know, who's the offer and stuff. You can check complete statistics. You can I, you can do last month, three months, whatever one doesn't matter. If it's in the off season, like either in the player break in June or like January, you're not going to have as many games. And so like typically here, I like to just look at three months so we can see how this guy performs on an individual level. You typically want to see a high uh, impact rating that is very um, in line with DraftKings, like first kill, um, 1v1s, 1v2s. 4Ks, whatever the case may be, because uh, those aren't really projectable. Like, they'll just happen, but, like, it's hard to be like, this guy's going to have exactly two 4Ks in this event. You can see how he's doing on a, on a individual basis on these last games. T this is typically what I look at. Um, we can also see what weapons they use in case you want to identify if they're just a rifle or an opera or whatever. Um, I would recommend you do that if you are wanting to make sure that you do have offers in your lineup. And so Mouse Next, they lost against Mouse Next, which is concerning because that's Mouse's B team, not even B team, like they're, they're like Mouse, the organization is a tier one team. Mouse next is their secondary team, which is like tier two, tier three, tier four. That's bad that they're losing to this. Uh, that's bad that they're losing to zero tendency. We can see that these are the only games they've played in official um, space since December. So this December game, in my opinion, isn't viable to use. It's too far out. So let's look at these last two games here. I would and I I would want to see them be able to compete with Mouse next. That will give me an idea of how they would complete against Blood because Blood is a slightly better team than or Bleed Blood. What what is this team called, man? This is Bleed. So I know Bleed is a slightly probably either equal to or better team than Mouse next. So that's a bad thing to see that they've lost against Mouse here. And when we look at how they performed, uh, they all performed pretty shitty. Uh, that's unfortunate for them. Zero tendency, Bleed. Mouse next, like these are the same group of guys they're playing against, and they have just performed incredibly poorly. Uh, when we look at, and this isn't even looking at Sabersim, like Sabersim does projections too. If you want another source, I just do it manually. I I built I hand build for CS:GO and stuff. Uh, I will use Sabersim to like simplify things and get it done fast. But I go in there and I don't even look at projections. I just import or not import, but I just select that. Oh, these I want. I need to make sure that. Sabersim is building in lineups with three from this team and three from that team and I'm working through that and stuff. And so like right now I'm just seeing no interest in passion at all. Um, the fact that yet again, Bleed is a bigger favorite to them. These guys are losing against teams that I think are equivalent to Bleed uh, puts me in a situation where I'm not going to play any passion players at all. There's just no reason to. Um, this is the game where I would um, be more interested to just, I haven't even looked at it yet, but I would cross out all the passion players and have the player pool be 15 players right now from these three teams with right now uh, Bleed being a pretty safe play. The main issue that I've seen so far is that I can't pin down, and it's very difficult to pin down once we start looking at more games and stuff, who is going to perform better? Who is going to be between Bleed? Who is going to be the slide? Who is like the best scorer? Guaranteed. That's what we're trying to find because when we're building a captain wise, which is also funny because like you can see I play a lot of showdown. NBA showdown, these like small these smaller slates are literally just practice for esports. That's why I'm playing that's why I play them. They it's the same approach, it's the same thing. NBA esports, F1, NASCAR, it's the same mentality. 
But when we're looking at bleed, it's difficult for me to pin down where they would, like just in my head, where they would fall in terms of projections. There's no one guy that's sticking out to me. It's very, it's a heads up between how these guys score, and so I'm hesitant on having them be the captain. It's not even the pricing, but it's it's what I'm seeing so far. And so let's go ahead and look at the next match. And so we got Godson versus Sandell. We look here. We know the bookmarker favorites are Godson. We know these guys are pretty even where these guys are in general. Plopsky is yet again carrying the team. When you have a guy who carries a team who has a one point. 1, 1.15, 1 1.2. Once you get into that range, you're going to have at least two guys on the team that don't boast a 1.0 rating because it's just one guy carrying the team and stuff. That's usually pretty good for fantasy. When you run into a situation like this to where you have two guys who are very good and then the rest of the team is pretty basic, that means the team is being ran through these two guys and depending on, hey, uh, can these two guys perform better than Plopsky, basically. You know, is Plopsky worth the two guys on this team? That's what that's what I view it as. You know, that's how I view the teams right here of how they've been playing and stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did with Godson or I did with bleeding the other teams to check out how Godson have been playing. Let's see if Plopsky have has been the guy who has been consistent on finishing uh with the most kills and stuff. So TSM centers, TSM again. This is uh, last day in January. I don't think yeah, I don't, we're not bringing anything else in. So yet again, these guys play each other. This will be a good indication of how people are, how they are performing against the team who literally just saw them and, and were, was able to perform. Yeah, they lost, but this is a, a, a great indicator of like the consistency that they're playing even in a win or a loss or whatever, even though they've lost against centers and stuff. So Let's go ahead. Let's see. Plopsky is yet again carrying the team way ahead of everybody else. It's in a loss, so we're expecting to see everybody else performing bad. Um, let's see if Plopsky is there again. Plopsky is yet again consistently the best scorer here, yet again in a loss. That's good to see. Top of the board, so that's good. Godsend again. Hey, Plopsky is yet again the most consistent guy in a win. We're seeing detailed statistics once we, once we look at it. A good amount of assists. That. So, yet again. It's not roughly this, because I, I I built a spreadsheet. I used to make actual projections for Counter Strike, and I was like, eh, I'm just I get the hang of it. I don't need to. But roughly, a kill and a death cancel each other out. It's like a one point. It's like one point five for a kill, and then like minus one for a death or whatever. So yeah, like it minuses out if the kill's significant or whatever. It could be even less. I don't I don't even remember. I don't I don't pay attention to this anymore. So a kill. 1.5, death is 1, assist is plus 1. So the main focus of the points are from kills that are projectable are from kills and assists, okay? So when we look at the assists that Plopsky is also getting, so you can argue half of 32, what is that, 16, I guess, plus 9. Don't do mental math. What is 16 plus 9? Holy fuck, dude. 25. 25 points right here, Okay. Uh, and then you just do that for everybody and you can have an idea of how they scored because I don't pay attention to or I don't try and project like first kills and stuff like that. So we're seeing that Plopsky is going to score pretty decently, even in losses, whatever wins are 15 plus 49, you know, that, that's good to see. And so, so far I'm seeing that Plopsky seems like where's well, the situation where he didn't. So, you know, we're looking at four games so far, three of those we've seen Plopsky be the best scorer. On Godsend, and the time that he wasn't, he was still a top three scorer and stuff, which is good to see. So let's look at San Gal, and let's see how these guys are performing here. So, I don't remember. I don't remember how that team plays. Sorry, I forgot. I know these guys. These guys literally just play today, so I know how they play, which is very shaky. These guys have been doing a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, Counter Strike on an official level, so that's always good to see here. So they lost. Are we all over the place? Yet again, we're kind of checking to see where these guys kind of fall in. Is there any consistency, or is it just wicked wild? Is it just kind of random of where these guys perform and stuff? Let's see. 
So Gang Young consistently top two so far. Consistently top three. Top one. Oh, that's it. that's the one I was almost looking at. So we have seen, or at least I like consistently, a top your top three score. This is why event is not what I follow, okay? Because yes, we're in event and stuff, but we just looked at the games where Gang He, whatever this guy's name is, we're gonna call him Gang. He's been a top. He's been the most consistent top three scorer. Just the games I looked at, we can look at more and stuff. But I just I'd like to just look at recent matches and stuff. So he's been the most consistent top three scorer. And even in those situations, he hasn't been first all the time, third all the time, or whatever. So when I view this, I would probably start going into this slate of like, okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's see what we can do. I'm not going to build anything here, but this is what I would do. So Plopsky, the guy that I've seen as the most consistent guy who is um, carrying the team, who is a important player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is mispriced in my opinion based on the slate he should be the most expensive guy and he should these both these guys should be more than nine thousand and eighty eight he should be closer to probably ninety two ninety four he should be closer to ninety two ninety four ninety six and these things should be swapped so just right off the bat plopsky is the guy that i'm going to use in the captain position no questions asked that's literally all i do um past that it's filling out lines i think i am probably going to run it with what's wrong I think I am going to build with 15 players. I don't know if I'm going to do the full 21 lines. I might just do 10, maybe even 8. I, I don't really feel as interested in this one because I don't know how Sangal is going to perform. And I can just cover the base that I want to with like 8 lines and stuff. Because I really, like, perfect situation today. Like, if, if I don't take this down, I just lose horribly. I completely whiff, completely missed, man. Those three lines literally just saved me. And, um... I typically, I typically just don't like scoring this poorly. This, I mean, I look at this and I'm like, these, these are actual mistakes. I completely fucked up here. I don't want to do this again. I don't want to be there. And so, like, when I view this one, we're gonna run with Plopsky as the captain and then just uh, fill this out. Um, it's most of the lines I'll build will be building for two zeros for bleed and God. But past that, uh, might throw in some with the other guys, and San. It's going to be difficult because he's 78, but this is the main focus. So, like, you would want to try and get the best guy from the other team. As I said, going back here, best guy from the other team. So, best guy from the primary team that's going to sweep. Second best guy from the guy who's going to sweep. Your third guy is truly just random. Because if you're nailing down the best player from the first team, the second best player from the first team, the third, fourth, and fifth best player from that team is just going to fight for that third spot in the lineup. So that's not what we're concerned about. And then this one, it could either be three players from the second team or the two best players or ownership to get different, but the best player from the second winning team, possibly the best player from the second losing team, or just the second best player from the second winning team. And then third is just whoever ends up in the lineup and stuff. Um that's how I build Counter-Strike lines. That's how I do. So we are 33 minutes in. Yet again, not really a, a big time-consuming thing when you go into Saber Sim, and sometimes I'll rant to see what that's being out to try and get an idea of what the public is going to use and stuff. But it's roughly about like a 45-minute, hour-long process and stuff. But uh, that's why I, like, I can't make videos on it every day, and I can't even really talk about it because I, I do it at like 11, midnight, 1 a.m. Nobody's up to see that. It's not that I don't want to, it's just that usually time constraints and stuff just mean that I, why would I make content that nobody's going to watch and stuff. Um, but anyway, that is my preview for the Counter-Strike slate tonight, kind of talking you through um, how I did this. And yeah, just uh, thank you guys for being here. If you want to support me, support everybody here, feel free to join True DFS. Hop on the Discord. I'll happily talk with you. I'll happily answer any questions. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, evening, whatever it may be, and I'll see you guys later.